All right, for this video, I'm going to show you how to draw motion maps for an object with a changing velocity. So the first example we have, it starts at a position of zero meters. Then the object increases its speed. You can see the slope of the position first time is getting steeper and steeper and steeper. And it's moving in a positive direction, and we know that because the slope of the position versus time graph is positive. So to do the motion map, the motion map, we essentially do a snapshot every one second or every equal interval of time of where the object is located. So it starts at a position of zero meters. So I'm going to put a dot right here. And initially it's not moving because this slope is zero. So I'm not going to draw an arrow attached to this dot, as you'll see for the subsequent ones. And it moves to the right. So the next second, the object is here. And 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 it's um, moved to the right. And I'm going to draw arrows to show that it goes to the right. And you notice the arrows start at the dot, and they go up to the next dot. They start at the dot, they go up to the next dot. And so looking at this, I can very easily see that the object was not moving initially. There's no arrow attached to the first dot. And then it moved to the right. And because those arrows got longer and the space between the dots, the position at every time interval, increased, then it must have been increasing its velocity. I can also draw acceleration arrows. So when an object is increasing its velocity, when it's going faster and faster and faster, the acceleration is going to be helping the velocity. They're going to point in the same direction. So I'm going to add acceleration arrows here. And since the velocity vectors, these arrows, are getting longer and longer and longer, the acceleration points in the same direction as those velocity arrows. And you can think of it as each time they're adding to it. So for instance, this arrow plus this change in velocity, this acceleration we have is going to give me this one. Then I'm going to accelerate it a little bit more. I'm going to increase my velocity a little bit more. I'm going to get this one. So each time we're increasing our velocity by about this much. Now we're not making actual measurements with a ruler or anything, but that's the idea behind this. So here we see the car is moving to the right and the acceleration is to the right as well. So when, those, when the velocity and the acceleration point in the same direction, it must mean it's increasing speed. The next one here is starting in a positive position, and it's going to increase its speed, but moving in a negative direction. The slope is getting steeper, but the slope is negative. So slope getting steeper, increasing speed, moving in a negative direction, the slope must be negative. So it starts at a positive position. I have to start my motion map over here on the right. And it wasn't moving initially, but it's going to start moving faster and faster and faster and faster. So I'm going to draw those arrows longer and longer and longer. So just glancing at this motion map, I can see moving to the left, going faster and faster and faster. The object is increasing the speed, its speed, so the acceleration must be helping the velocity. So acceleration arrows must point in the same direction as the velocity. So they're going to point left as well. So acceleration to the left, or negative acceleration, doesn't mean speeding up or slowing down. You, you have to look at it in the context of what the direction of the object is. Because in our first example, we had acceleration to the right, or positive acceleration, and it was increasing the object speed. And then here we have acceleration to the left or negative acceleration, and it is again increasing its object, the object speed. And then the last two, this one where the object is already moving and then it's decreasing speed because the slope is getting shallower and shallower. So with our motion map, we're going to show it already moving. And then each second it's not going as far, and at the end we show it not moving here. Because it's slowing down, I can think of these acceleration arrows as eating away at each of these velocity vectors. And so after the first second, it's going to be the, this arrow here, which represents how fast the object is going and its direction, is going to be a little bit shorter because the acceleration is working against it. So I have acceleration to the left while moving to the right, so I'm slowing down. Notice the acceleration arrows are always the same the whole time. That's a little congruency tick mark. And we're going to assume with all these that we have constant acceleration. And the last one starts at a positive position. It's already moving. We already have a negative slope here. It's moving to the left. And the slope is getting more and more shallow, so it must be decreasing speed or slowing down. And it's a negative slope, so moving in the negative direction. So we're going to have something very similar to this example, but the opposite direction. So this is how you do a motion map. A few things that aren't shown here is if this object was to turn around, 
So for, perhaps we're going to slow down going left, and then we're going to turn around and go faster and faster and faster. Maybe like this one here. What I would do is I would just stack another set of blue arrows right on top of here to show that it turned around and went the other direction. If I put the blue arrows right on top of each other, like it'll just be a mess. So we can just kind of make layers. Also, if we're in one spot for a long time and not moving, what I would do is I would just take a, let's see, I can mark on this. Um, let's say it stayed here for a while. So forget about the red arrows right there. So if it stayed still, I would just show the position is not changing by doing a stack like this. And then let's say it started moving again, so maybe to the right, I could show that. Um, and so if we have more complicated motion, we may have to do layers. And then maybe I put my acceleration arrows down here and up here. You can just label them acceleration so it's clear what you're doing. All right, that is how you do motion maps.